Hey guys, Nurse Mike here and welcome to SimpleNursing.com. Before we get today's lecture started, please remember, check out our brand new app and get access to our new pharmacology and med surge mastery courses. Plus 11 other courses like fundamentals, pediatrics, maternity, mental health, and more. Complete with over 300 follow along cheat sheets and a massive quiz bank loaded with detailed rationales to test your knowledge. Join for free. Click the link in our description below. All right, guys, let's begin. Now for the top missed questions from the immune section. Question number one, a patient is prescribed methotrexate for the treatment of an autoimmune disorder. Which patient report requires immediate assessment and intervention by the nurse? Okay, so let's break this down. The question's asking for methotrexate. Which report needs immediate intervention as well as immediate assessment? So before looking at the options, we're just thinking of two or three things we know about the drug. So methotrexate, we call methnotrexate. No babies and a big bleed risk, as well as infections. And always think, what kills the patient first? So the NCLEX is all about safety, so we're thinking loss of life, loss of limb, and ABCs first. So first option is, I will consult with my provider before discontinuing birth control. So this is incorrect since it's not a priority here. So guys, yes, we always consult with the HCP before stopping birth control. So methnotrexate, we have no pregnancy. Now the second option is correct. I noticed that I have developed tiny reddish purple lesions all over my arms. So yes, this is correct since it's a big priority indicating a bleed. Tiny red purple lesions are petechiae, basically bleeding under the skin. Now the last two options are incorrect. I have not had a normal bowel movement in about two days. So two days is fine for a no bowel movement, not life threatening, but anything over five days is a little bit concerning. Now the last one here, I seem to be losing excessive amounts of hair since starting this medication. Again, that's not priority since it's not life threatening. Now the next question here, what should the nurse include for teaching for a patient newly prescribed hydroxychloroquine for treatment of systemic lupus? Select all that apply. Okay, let's break this down. This question's asking what teaching to include for the keyword hydroxychloroquine. So what the heck is that drug, right? So the memory trick, hydroxy, just think hydroxy. So eye damage and chloroquine, just think chlorine in the eyes. We need to see the eye doctor at least every 6 to 12 months. And always think, what kills the patient first? So the NCLEX, again, is all about safety. So specifically, we're thinking loss of life and loss of limb in the eyes here. So option number one, ensure to see the optometrist at least every two years. Big no-no. It's incorrect. We teach every 6 to 12 months, not every two years. Now option number two Report any new visual changes to your provider. Yes, visual changes with hydroxy, we think hydroxy, that eye damage. So report changes in vision. Number three, this medication is likely to increase feelings of fatigue associated with lupus. No, this is incorrect. This drug actually helps increase energy to improve symptoms of lupus where we typically have fatigue. Now the last two options are also incorrect. Notify your provider if no improvements in the symptoms is noticed within about a week of beginning the medication. So no, this option is incorrect. Like most immunosuppressants, this medication takes time to kick in, typically over a few weeks, not over one week. And lastly, supplementation with calcium and vitamin D is recommended. No, this is incorrect. It's not needed because it doesn't cause bone problems. So remember, focus on the eye in the hydroxychloroquine. Now the next question, the nurse is instructing a patient with a severe allergy to a wasp sting on the proper use of an epinephrine auto-injector. Which patient statement best demonstrates that teaching has been effective? Okay, so let's break this down. The question's asking the proper use of an epi auto-injector. The key word here is best demonstrates effective teaching. So before looking at the options, Think of the top two or three things you know about the drug for EpiPens. So number one, we inject into the outer thigh at a 90 degree angle. 
Number two, it's used immediately at the first sign of an allergic reaction, and we seek immediate medical attention after the use. Now, number three, store EpiPens in a dark place at room temperature. Again, not too hot or not too cold. So option number one is incorrect. I'll keep my EpiPen stored in the refrigerator. No, this is too cold. Remember, room temperature here. Now option two, this one's correct. I will inject the medication into the outer thigh at the first sign of the allergic reaction. So yes, outer thigh at the first sign. And again, first signs mean ABCs, airway, breathing, and circulation, and also hives too. Now the last two options are incorrect. I will seek follow-up treatment within about 24 hours of injecting the medication. No, we seek immediate attention immediately after use. 24 hours is way too long. And the last option, I will hold the EpiPen firmly in place for at least five seconds. No, we hold it in place for 10 seconds minimum. Now the last question here, which lab result should the nurse review prior to the administration of Etanercept? to a patient with psoriatic arthritis. Select all that apply. Okay, so let's break this down. The question's asking for which lab result to review before etanercept. So before looking at the options, what do we know about etanercept? So etanercept, we say, intercepts the immune response to cause a lower immune system. And with low immune system, this means big risk for infection as well as bone marrow suppression. So option one is correct here. Tuberculin skin test, or that TB skin test, yes, the big risk for infection. This drug can actually reactivate the TB since the immune system is so low, meaning that the defense shield of the body is low. Now, option number two, a PTT, or partial thromboblastin time. Guys, no, this one's a little bit tricky, but it's incorrect. So Bone marrow suppression can lead to low platelets and bleed risk, but there's no need to check the PTT directly. Now, on the NCLEX, we typically only check the PTT for heparin and not for immunosuppressants. Now, option three, white blood cell count. Yes, this is huge with a low immune system. WBCs are always priority. We must check these before giving any immunosuppressant. And the last two options here. Total cholesterol panel. No, this is incorrect here. So cholesterol is not affected with this medication. Typically, it's statins like lovastatin. And lastly, option five, a red blood cell count. Yes, this one is correct. So anemia is to be expected from bone marrow suppression. So we got to check those RBCs. That's in the CBC, the complete blood count there. All right, guys, that wraps it up for this segment. Don't forget to take your quiz and download the study guides. All right, guys, that wraps it up for this segment. Don't forget to take your quiz and download the study guides. Thanks for watching. For our full video and new quiz bank, click right up here to access your free trial. And please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. Last but not least, a big thanks to our team of experts helping us make these great videos. All right, guys, see you next time.